Okay, so here we are going to do some examples of some word problems that you might find on your testing or your homework. Um, we're going to start with multiplication. It's pretty basic. Uh, when doing word problems, I find even uh, some of the more difficult ones that it is easier to draw pictures sometimes than it is to just figure out what's going on. So I'm going to draw a picture and uh, then we'll write the number sentence over here. You can uh, print out a worksheet on the page to go along, or you can just write in a notebook if that helps, whatever helps to follow along um, to figure these out. So first we're going to look at number one. Maggie is, well that's not good grammar, Maggie is collecting stones by the river. When she is done, she finds that only five stones will fit into a bag. She fills up four bags. How many stones does she have altogether? So all together, first of all, is going to be kind of one of our keywords here. So all together, that tells us we are either going to add or multiply because we know that multiplication is just repeated addition. So we are going to be adding, but we might be able to shorten it into a multiplication problem. We will see. So she fills up four bags. I'm going to just circle that. You can circle that on your paper too because that's important information. So I'm just going to draw my bags here. So there's one, two, three, four. Now I'm doing this with a mouse so it's not perfect but you get that basic idea. So we know she fills up four bags. Well how many stones go in each bag? Only five stones. So let's draw our five stones in each bag. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and five. And in our last bag, three, four, and five. So we have five stones in each bag, and she filled up four bags. So that's what we have. So how many stones does she have all together? Well, there's a couple ways we can write this. This can be an addition number sentence. So we know we have five stones in this bag, five stones in this bag, five in this one, and five in this one. And if we know all together, that means we are going to add them up. Five plus five is 10, plus five is 15, plus five is 20. Another way we could do that is we could skip count. 5, 10, 15, 20. We know that. Now, we can also see that each one of these numbers is the same. This is repeated addition. And what do we know about repeated addition? We know that it's the same as multiplication. So we have 5, 1, 2, 3, 4 times. And 5 times 4 is also 20. So when we write our answer over here, we have to always make sure we write what we're looking for here, stones. So our answer would be, how many stones does she have all together? She has 20, and you can't just leave it as 20 because she has 20 what? She has 20 stones. Okay. So that's how we would find the answer to that. There's a couple of different ways. You could do the skip counting, you could do the repeated addition, or the multiplication. All right, let's go ahead and look at Hector here. Hector has eight chocolate chip cookies. Lucky boy. Each, cho each cookie has four chocolate chips in it. How many chocolate chips does Hector have total? So total is another keyword that's going to tell us that we need to add or multiply if we can multiply. Total is how many do we have basically the same as all together. So we know he has eight cookies and each so we're going to underline he has eight chocolate chip cookies. He has eight and each cookie has exactly four chocolate chips in it. So this is going to look really similar to our one up here. We're just going to have more. So I'm going to use some different colors here. We'll use blue for cookies. No, here we'll use brown because they're cookies. So it's eight chocolate chip cookies. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, and eight. And each cookie only has four chips in it, so we'll make some little black chips. One, two, make that one bigger, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so on in each one. Kind of got gypped on his cookies there, right? and his chips at least. He's got a lot of cookies, not a lot of chips. All right, so what does this tell us? Well, this tells us that there are, we could, if we were really, I guess, lazy about it, we could just count up how many cookies are in each one. We could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But it's going to take us a long time to count up eight worth of cookies. So we know that each cookie has four chips in it, right? So we could write an expanded number sentence like this, an addition number sentence, because each one has four. And I could put plus signs in between all of them. We could add four, 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 or we could skip count four, 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 four. four. But that's going to take forever. So what we would want to do is we would want to multiply because that's going to take the least amount of time. So we know we have four chips in each cookie and how many cookies do we have? We have eight. And since we are getting good at our multiplication tables we should know what four times eight is but if we need to skip count four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight, thirty-two. So 32. All right. So our answer over here is going to be 32. Now, can I just leave it as 32? 32 what? Is that 32 cookies? No, it's 32 chocolate chips. So I'm just going to write cocoa chips for right now because I'm writing with a mouse, and that's difficult to do. All right, but you get the idea. 32 chocolate chips. All right, let's look at this last one here. Sarah goes to a dog park. She counts 10 dogs at the park. I'm going to say that that's probably important, so I'm going to underline it right away. If she wants to calculate how many dog legs there were at the park, what would be the number sentence? So it's asking what would be the number sentence. This is a number sentence here. This is a number sentence here. This is also a number sentence, but this is the shorthand version of it. And also, what would be the answer? So it's not giving us any hints, really, because it's not telling us all together or total. So we don't know exactly what we're supposed to do from those keywords. However, let's think about the problem. There's 10 dogs at the park. That's the only number we're given. But that's OK. So we have 10 dogs, and I'm not going to try to draw a dog. Um, I'm just going to make 10 circles to show our 10 dogs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. But she wants to calculate how many legs there are at the park. Well, assuming that all the dogs have all the legs that come with them, they would each have how many legs? Four, right? One, two, three, four. And we could draw out all four legs on all the dogs. But that's going to take a really long time. So instead, I'm just going to write the number. We know there's four on each one of these dogs, right? Four legs for each dog. We're assuming they all have all their legs. Most dogs do. So even though it didn't give us the number four in the problem, we know that they have four legs. So we know that's four. All right. So what would be the number sentence? So how would we write that as a multiplication problem? Well, we take the number of legs, four, and we multiply it by the number of dogs, 10. And since we know multiplication, 4 times 10, 40. That's pretty easy. We could also say that there were 10 dogs times 4 legs. 
that's also going to get you 40. So either one of those multiplication sentences would be correct. And what would the answer be? The answer would be 40, but it wouldn't just be 40. What are we talking about? There are 40 legs. All right, and there is some steps to walking you through some basic multiplication problems.